Hello and welcome to the Battery Acid Dev channel. Over the past couple years, I've created several videos on how to add multiplayer functionality to your Unity project using AWS or Amazon Web Services. Now I went with AWS because I'm pretty familiar with it and I knew if there was any weird requirements that would come up, I would be able to handle it. Um, and I know there's a steep learning curve with it, especially for newer developers. So if you do have any questions or concerns with your project, please drop by the Discord and feel free to ask and uh, I'm sure we'll be able to hash it out. So the first video I'd like to talk about is the homegrown solution using Lambda and WebSockets. This is a pretty straightforward communication method where you just have to manually manage the sending of messages between the client and server. I'm thinking you can use this solution for most games you can think of, especially turn-based games, card games, and slower paced multiplayer games. Really anything that doesn't require complex collision detection or physics calculations, I think you'd be good. This is a very cheap solution where you're only really billed for how long the Lambda function is actually running, which is milliseconds or seconds at best. But for the most part, this is a pretty easy solution to get up and running. It's very easy to make changes and edit things. And most platforms will support this. I think WebSockets support it everywhere, whether you're making a mobile app or a web page. And I guess the only real downside is that you have to manage all these independent services yourself. Whereas something like Gamelift kind of has a tailored ecosystem. It's not going to be that complex once you get started and you kind of dig in and see how things work. Uh, plus, you can always drop by the Discord channel and ask for help. So another video I did where I use WebSockets, I wanted to show how you can synchronize player locations. So if you did want to have a multiplayer world where players were running around and it wasn't too intense, uh, you could actually get away with that with WebSockets. Now, it's not perfect and you're probably going to have to mess around with it a little bit to get it to work, but it just it shows you that you don't have to do anything crazy to get uh, multiplayer working. I guess I'm thinking something more about like a card game as well here or Animal Crossing. That's a pretty good example. You can probably even do an MMO with this if you didn't really have to do any collision detection or physics calculations and you just had a bunch of characters running around. You know, I wonder if you just had like all the coordinates of your map and if you needed to actually check for collision detection, you could just pass the current coordinates back to the server and the server could say, oh, he's out of bounds and then just correct the person there. Really, I mean, there's a lot you can do with this simple WebSocket approach. And I wanna say that it can handle probably most games that you're gonna make. Unless you're doing something like a high pace first person shooter um, or some crazy physics or something like that, I think this, these WebSocket approaches are actually pretty nice. Okay, so on to real time game lift. Um, if you've never heard of game lift, it's kind of a, all-inclusive game development and deployment ecosystem that Amazon has developed. Uh, there's two flavors, real-time and custom. So the real-time version of that is where you have like a single script that acts as your server and you can upload that and deploy it to an instance, a server instance, and it'll be ready to go. It can be as simple as a single script and a few functions to get your backend up and running, or it can be a whole project. Uh, it really just depends on what your requirements are, a whole Node.js project. Now the communication is pretty straightforward with it. It's similar to the WebSocket approach where you're just passing messages back and forth, but I think it's a little bit more robust and easier to use. And what's nice about real time is they've really streamlined how to build and deploy and scale your, your game server in a very easy to use seamless way. So if you're, looking for something that's a little easier to use, I would go with that. I think cost is really the big, I don't wanna say negative, but the, the one thing that you're gonna to have to keep in mind because you know you have that free tier, but if you're developing and testing every day, you're gonna burn through those hours really quick. And that's why I always recommend people to set their desired fleet instance count to zero uh, as much as possible because you, that that free tier just goes away quickly. I've, I've seen it happen. I've left it on overnight and woke up with a $40 bill. Um, so that wasn't fun. Don't do that. Make sure to always set your desired count back to zero uh, whenever you're done, whenever you're done working. Even if you just go to lunch, just kill that server and come back. I really think that cost is the biggest issue. I, I would probably just use the Lambda and WebSocket approach just because I know how to use this stuff. Um, because it's so much cheaper to use. Now, if you don't really care about that, maybe you've got some funding and you just wanna have that 
really nice ecosystem to deploy your game to, then Real-Time Game Lift is the easiest way to get into that. I've got a brand new video on that that came out this year, so check that out. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. All right, so let's move on to custom game lift. So we talked about real time where you have kind of a small footprint for your server. It's maybe a script, maybe a small Node.js project. Custom game lift, think AAA games. These are the games that are gonna require a full server build of your Unity game so that you can do collision detection, uh, physics calculations to make sure that the bullets that are shooting hit the player correctly that the vehicles that crash into the wall actually hit a wall. You're kind of looking at preventing a lot of cheating issues here. And just to make sure that what's happening on the different game clients are actually happening within the bounds and the rules of the game that you've created. So what you'll see is you'll create your game, you have your levels and you have your walls and your weapons and whatnot and they will you will create and you will create like a, a server build version of that that'll kind of be dumbed down but you'll still be able to do the physics calculations to make sure that no one's driving through walls and that the weapons are actually firing and hitting the targets that they're supposed to be hitting. They call that authoritative server. Now, authoritative just means that the server is double checking what the clients are doing to make sure that everything is going as planned, as, as the game is intended to do, so that you're preventing cheating. You're just preventing weird stuff from happening that shouldn't happen. Think Call of Duty first person shooter, high paced game. There's lots of physics going on. Uh, really, that's that's really what this is about, this custom game with version here. If you're not doing that, if you're just tracking something like somebody moving around in like a simple game like Animal Crossing, this isn't really for that. I mean, you could use it, but um, I would take a different approach real time or maybe one of the WebSocket approaches. But again, custom game lift, you're gonna have a full server build. Uh, this is also where you're gonna need to install and use your own communication framework. Uh, there isn't one out of the box. So you're looking at Photon and Mir. Um, for the custom game lift example that I did, I used Mir's KCP transport. That was pretty easy to use. You just had to, you had to keep track of sending messages. I know Photon and I think Mir has some like SyncVar support where it, it can just track different characters or different items in the game. So you're not really, manually sending messages. It's just that the data gets synced automatically uh, with the server, between the server and client, so that uh, you can do these calculations to make sure things are going appropriately, like health, damage, location on the map. It's not like you have to send these things automatically. I, uh, Photon and Mirror will have support for that kind of stuff. So keep that in mind uh, when you're researching your, your backend server. So again, unless you need some kind of physics collision detection um, and you're really doing these heavy, fast-paced calculations of constant moving for characters. I don't really think you need custom game lift. I'm sure there's a couple other scenarios I'm missing right now, but uh, for the most part, this is like your AAA game, your fast-paced game. So the final option I'm gonna review is a server build from Unity uploaded directly to an EC2 instance. This is where you can do a Unity server build and upload it to an EC2 instance to just play around with it or just to have as your backend server. Maybe you don't like game lift, maybe you wanna manage all the auto scaling and all the security and all the things involved with getting your game up and running. Uh, I don't know, I guess maybe when you're early in development you just wanna see how your communication is gonna work out and you don't really wanna deal with the game lift ecosystem. I think this is a good approach. You can really have like an intimate knowledge of what's going on on your server. Um, you can even use smaller instances uh, that could be a lot cheaper than initially running like those heavy game lift larges that they have uh, which are the smallest for game lift but there are like really small instances that you can probably run your backend server on this is really close to kind of the custom game lift approach where you're only really going to have to do this if you have a pretty intense game that you want to have a unity server build for or unreal all these things apply to unreal as well by the way um, I, I haven't really touched on unreal yet but um, it's kind of the same thing. I, I'm not terribly familiar with those libraries, but I'm assuming that you can do a Unreal server build and upload that just as easy as you can a Unity build. And with the EC2 solution, again, you're gonna have to manage all the auto scaling, the security groups, you know, you're gonna be managing multiple AWS services, API gateway, the whole development build deployment process. It's gonna be a manual thing. I guess if you just wanted to have a one-off game uh, sitting on an EC2 server and maybe you know how to use it already, then I guess this is a good approach. It's pretty, 
it's pretty easy but again it, it doesn't come with a whole lot out of the box you know you're you're basically in charge of and responsible for managing everything at that point so that, that's kind of where game lift is nice because it's similar to just doing an ec2 build except they give you this whole ecosystem for the game deployment development process so I think that's it for the multiplayer functionality, but I think it's worth mentioning a few other videos that I've done. Uh, the first one is sign up and login functionality. AWS uh, has this service called Cognito. You can use uh, social logins like Facebook, Google, Apple, et cetera, wh whichever provider you wanna use uh, for your app or for your web page. I've got a video on that. I've actually got a couple different videos, but I would use the more recent one. But that's one of the first things you wanna do, right? Is you wanna have users, you want them to create an account. Uh, you wanna be able to track all that. So if you're already using AWS, this is kind of a nice segue, uh, keeps everything in that AWS ecosystem and it allows you to have login and sign up, which is really great. There's another video I did on how to schedule second level precision lambda functions so what does that mean uh let's say your game has like building things that take time like you're building a barracks or you're waiting for an upgrade to complete that might take four hours it might take 48 hours who knows well since that's kind of a common thing for a lot of these games i created a demo video on how you can schedule lambda functions to execute at a given time in the future it's not as easy as you would think uh, especially because I even incorporated how to do push notifications. So it's easy to kind of schedule it, but then how do you tell the client that that execution is completed? Well, I talk about that. I use push notifications. You can actually use text messages. You can get kind of crazy with it, but I think I just went with the push notification route. So check that video out if you're looking to do something like that. And then the final video uh, is the how to debug game lift. I did a quick demo on how to basically SSH into a game lift server and view the logs. And I think there's a couple other things you can check out there to see what's going on that you may not have in the game lift console. Uh, so if you're really stuck and you need to just see what's going on in the server and check out those logs in real time, you can actually do that. And again, it, it's actually a pretty important point that you can view the logs in real time. If you like, you don't have to wait for that down download button to appear in the uh, game lift console on your game session. So if you're a subscriber, you've probably noticed that I haven't really made any videos in the last few months. Uh, it's because I'm kind of taking a break to build a platform for people who want to create games, whether you're a game developer, just trying to get started, maybe you're an artist or a level designer, story guy, I don't know, what, whatever, whatever's involved, um, I'm making a platform for that. So stay tuned there. Other than that, I do plan on getting back into making videos soon. I'm excited to check out the Unreal Engine. I'm probably gonna start there next. Uh, and dive in and just see how that goes and maybe do kind of the same thing there like how do you make multiplayer games there or maybe I'll check out some other functionalities. Please let me know what you'd like to see and uh, if there's enough interest yeah I'll make a video on it so let me know in the comments or drop by the discord channel and if you're interested in this kind of topic make sure to subscribe. Well thanks for watching.